Hi everyone, this is Z and Carol. We're from Sydney Poho Dance. Uh, the purpose of this video is to just show you the very basic concepts of Poho, the basic steps. Um, remember, this is just for newcomer students, uh, but it's also useful for students who already know how to dance in beginner level or intermediate, just to brush up your basic uh, small things. Um, things that we often forget about, but things that can make a very big difference in your dancing style. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so the first important thing we're going to talk about is basic one. So basic one is simply, right now what I'm doing here is walking forward and backwards. Okay, so we'll look at our feet and see what's going on. So as a leader, you want to start with the left foot first. So you're going to step forward with your left foot and then come back in the middle both feet together and right foot you want to step back and then come back remember the whole motion has to be very smooth so that you're not bouncing you're not jumping okay practice this as long as it takes you to get it smooth so that you're not jumping you're not hopping not like that it's simple and smooth as if you're walking around, all relaxed. So now that you have basic one uh, mastered there, nice and smooth, um, we'll look at basic two. Just like basic one, you're going to start with the left foot. So your left foot, in this case, will go right behind your right foot. Just like that. So I'll come up close if you want to focus on my legs, and my, uh, my feet. Your left foot wants to go behind your right foot, right? And you come back in the middle, and your right foot does the same thing, right behind your left foot. So the whole motion would be just like this, if we look at it again. So left, middle, right, middle, left, middle, right. Just like basic one, it's important to have this move nice and smooth. What we don't want to do is this. No, we don't want to do that. The other thing about basic two is make sure your the foot in the back, it's not going that far. It should stay very close to your right foot. Okay, so not like this not like that it's just tiny steps all right also if you focus on my shoulders when i'm doing basic two my body is not turning too much it's just almost facing towards you and i'm doing very small steps with it. so that's the tip for basic two very small things but it's important for you to be able to be a better dancer in the world. okay all right, now that we have got basic one and basic two right, it's time to partner up. So first thing what I have to do is, it's for everyone, not just me, okay? Now we gotta make sure our hygiene is good. We need to make sure we take a shower, uh, we brush our teeth, use mints if necessary. It's very important. No matter how good a dancer you are, if your hygiene is not good, mm, maybe not many people want to dance with you. Okay, so I've taken a shower. I'll make sure I'm uh, nice and clean. Uh, smelling good, I hope, Carol. <laughs> and now, I'll go and ask Carol if she would like to dance with me. Carol, would you like to have dance? Okay, so Carol say yes. So, before we go up and uh, partner up, it's important to get our um, position, body position right. So the way we would like to do this, Carol face backwards to the camera. As a leader, when I'm com coming up to her, I want to stand here. So I'm able to see over her shoulder. When we stand in the embrace position, if you look at our feet, you will notice that my right foot, it is between Carol's two feet. And same with Carol's right foot, it is between my, let's turn around, it's between my two feet. Right. Okay. So 
what happens because of that is when we're dancing, okay, and we decided to stare at the sky, and dance, and move without looking at our feet, our, we're not stepping on each other's toes, okay? So that's the advantage of that, stepping between each other's feet. It's a small thing, but it can make you safe, it can keep you safe, and it can make the dance more enjoyable. Alright, so the next thing we're going to talk about is what do we do with our hands? Where do we put our hands? Okay, for leaders and followers, together, we're going to have a look at it. So, um, as a leader, when I'm standing here, I'll show with my right hand first. You want to keep it in the middle of the back of your forward hand. Not too high, not too low, of course not, and just in the middle. Perfect. For the follower's arm, if you look at my shoulder, Carol is putting her left hand on my shoulder blade, on the top part. Okay? You can put it here, you can put it here. You may also choose to grab my shoulder if you want, depending on the length of your arm. Uh, but usually what we don't want you to do is put your hand way down here. All right? Because if we're dancing and Carol puts her hand on my elbow like that and I'm trying to do a move and I wouldn't be able to release myself to do the moves. Okay? So that's another important thing. And also for followers, if your hand is down here, on my elbow, on my arm, chances are that when we're dancing, it's gonna slip and fall, all right? <laughs> so keep it on the shoulder nice and tight, so whenever we're dancing, we're moving, it doesn't fall down. All right, now the other thing and very important part is um, the posture and tension. Uh, posture is important, of course, that uh, it makes your dance look beautiful, it makes it comfortable for the other person to dance with you, um, and also your leading and your following both becomes clearer, okay? So what I mean by posture is you want to stand, you want to stand straight, okay? You don't want to lean forward at each other like that. You want to stand straight and you don't want to bend your knees, okay? Uh, the other thing that uh, you will notice that most of us when we dance for all, we tend to touch each other's head. Now, the tip about that is you don't want to push too much. I'll take off my glasses so I don't hurt Carol. You don't want to push like that. Um, you don't want to pu push forward too much. You just want to keep your head here and just lightly touch each other. So when we say tension or uh, when we say, you know, that you need to put more tension in your arms, more tension in your body, what exactly do we mean by that? Um, so, most of you would have seen this on the dance floor. Our arms are flying around, right, like spaghetti. It's because there's no tension in the arms. Okay, so what you want to do is don't make it too hard, but try to keep your arms steady. And it's important too that leaders and followers maintain a little bit of push in the arm. Not like too much, but a little bit. That makes the signals clear when you try to do some other move. It's easy for the follower to understand. Same goes for followers, that they too have to maintain that push equal to the leader. Okay, so very small exercise for you to practice is with your follower, you want to gently push. Both of you should try to match each other's push. Um, and then also practice the pull. The pull is something I'll show you why it's important. It's for basic two. That's the next next uh, point I'll be talking about. Um, but get the tension right. And when you do dance, however, make sure you're leading with the body. Okay. Um, make sure you're using the core to move. When you are stepping uh, in basic one, make sure it's not just a step in the place. As you can see, I'm moving my feet, but my body is going nowhere. We should do our steps in a way that our body is actually moving back and forward, as you can see right now. 
Okay, so first we'll show how to do basic two uh, before we finally show you how to combine basic one and basic two while dancing with a partner. So when you do basic two, it was as we saw before in the videos, just remember that leaders and followers will be mirroring each other. So for basic two, when I start with my left foot, my left foot going behind my right foot, Carol will be doing with her right foot first. Okay? So again, for leaders, your left foot first, followers, the right foot. Okay, I'll show it from the front. Um, leaders for your left foot, you start with your left foot, followers uh, with your right foot. Perfect. Okay? So, the other thing is, basic two, Instead of holding like this, we'll actually be holding our hands like this and doing basic two together. Okay? So you'll be letting one hand go, catch the other hand. And um, doing basic two like this. The other very important part and a very tiny part is how you're gripping the um, follower's hands with your fingers. I'll show you very close. Okay, so what exactly do we do with our fingers when we when we do basic two, when we're um, holding our follower's hand, all right? Um, so as you can see here, I'm holding Carol's hand. Hi, Carol. <laughs> all right. I'm only using my four fingers, okay? I'm not using the thumb. And this is important because um, if I use my thumb and I put my thumb here, I'm restricting the movement of the follower's hand and it's not very pleasant for her wrist it feels very bad on her wrist put a lot of pressure when I let go of the thumb as you can see two things happen okay two things happen when I let go of the thumb number one my fingers are more flexible it can walk around her hand and also the length from her wrist to my wrist has increased so you have more room to do your turns or any advanced other moves that you'll learn later on in the class. Okay, so it's a very good practice to um, learn how to grip properly using just four fingers and no thumbs. All right. What we're going to do is uh, try to understand exactly when do we finish basic one and when do we start basic two or the other way around. When do we finish basic two and exactly when we start basic one from there? The transition, okay? So it's nothing too difficult. So in basic one, you notice that we step forward and we come back to the middle. So there's a middle part and then you step back with the right foot. Again, come back to the middle, right? So this middle part is where all the changes happen. You step forward, come back to the middle, you step back, come back to the middle, you finished basic one once. When we're in this middle, now my next move would be my left foot forward, right? Now, instead of using my left foot to go forward, I can actually use my left foot to step behind my right foot. And that is the start of basic two. So again, if you want to do basic one, you finish with your right foot and you know your next step is going to be with your left foot, but you pull it back and you start doing basic two. When we're doing basic two, we start, as you know, as always, is with a left foot. Again, we come back to the middle. We step back with the right foot and here for the second time you have that middle part again this is where we are able to change knowing that my next step is going to be with my left foot instead of going behind I go forward and that way I'm back into basic one again I'll show you a couple of uh, rounds of basic one basic two change so I'm doing basic one right now Okay, so left foot forward, right foot backwards, 
Okay, let's go forward, back foot backwards. And when I'm here in the middle, I start basic two, basic two with my left foot. All right, so left foot back, right foot back. Keep doing that. Right foot back. Here, next step is going to be with my left foot. So instead of going there, I decide to step forward and go into basic one. So that's the main part of transitioning from basic one to basic two and the other way around. Uh, take as long as you need to master this part. Uh, this transition is important because based on this, your followers will follow you. They'll know exactly when to change as well. All right, guys, it's important always to step when you're moving, but it's also important to pause when you're moving as well. Uh, what I mean by pause is um, if you have come to our classes, you'll often see we count when we teach you the steps. And counting is a good way to make sure that stepping at the right time, pausing when it's right as well. So coming back to basic one and basic two, if we are doing basic one and if I'm counting with it, you'll notice we usually count like this. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Notice how every time I'm saying and, there is a pause. And every time I say number, I'm stepping. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. I'll do basic two. It's the same principle. So have a look. So basic two. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Alright. So now we'll take everything that we saw in this video and we'll put it in the dance, alright? Um, just to show you um, how it's all applied together. We'll do basic one, basic two in the right posture, uh, using the right kind of tension. Uh, we won't be doing any turns or crazy moves. The focus of this video again was just for the basics, okay? Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, it's never too easy to learn a dance through videos alone. So if you are interested in coming to our school, learning a little bit more uh, about this amazing dance style, um, please, um, ooh, is it opposite? It is opposite, but it's a Sydney Fall dance. Check out our Facebook page, uh, come pay us a visit, um, and there's so much to learn and uh, there's so much to enjoy in this beautiful dance. But if you do have any questions, feel free to contact our volunteers and um, we're always eager to listen to your questions and assist you there. Okay, well, thank you very much from myself, C and Carol. Thank you, okay, guys. see you uh, at Sydney Fall Dance.